There is something fundamentally wrong about how humans wage war. A thought pulsated in the mind of Detrius. He was a warrior himself, a priest of war god Rez, and he of all people knew that war was a pragmatic matter, but this, this was something different. He expected a grand battle, a glory in combat, to clash with enemy forces in contest of wills, wits, combat finesse and camaraderie. He was expecting to stand shoulder to shoulder with those humans, to witness the valiance of their hearts and will to fight. Instead, he stood staring at their magical war table as they wiped out entire armies in a matter of seconds, not even seeing their opponents with their own eyes, let alone their faces. They were just images of some figures being annihilated by their machines. He could not believe it at first. He knew of his mind that it did in fact happen, but his heart refused to believe it. The reality of it sunk in when he finally walked across the field of utter devastation. The broken carcasses of mighty Nuala Dem pyramids at the outskirts of Delphianopolis was all that remained upon charred-covered valley. He remembered as he was looking for bodies, but all he could find were just pieces, as in the distance the humans were already staging an assault of the city. Without question, this assault was another stroke of military brilliance of those humans, but there was no place for him or his warriors in it. This was supposed to be the day they achieved a grand victory, a victory worthy of celebration, and as such the right moment right before the Arfordian festival, yet he did not feel it. All he felt at this point was this strange feeling, something he never felt before, something that people had no word for it, but humans did. It was an existential dread. So with this summer thought, he came back to Elveron, upon the Aphrodian fields, to participate in the coming festivities. He was brought here to where humans built another of their forts, a fort in the place where there should be no war, and yet they built this fort here of metal wall and their devastating weapons, looking over the entire Aphrodian fields. Given their situation, he could not question them, for they were allies that appeared in their darkest hour, and as such, all their quirks was to be accommodated and tolerated. At least their wrath, if even it can be called, like that was aimed at his enemies. Datrius, I heard congratulations are in order. We retook the city of Diaphanopolis. CID agent Lamar Tadson said in Eldium language, as he approached Atreus, who stood in his mineral armour, looking over the fields from on top of the human wall. Ah, Archivist Smith, yes, but I do not feel so, and I think you are the best person to help me clarify some things for me, Datrius replied in English, still with a strong accent, hoping that speaking their language would make him better understand. Wow, Datrius, what is it? Tadson said with concern, looking at Datrius, who still stared out into the distance. You do know we think that you humans are without a soul, Datrius said, looking out into the fields, almost ready for all those festivities, and adding the final touches to also celebrate the victory. Better not say that to every human you meet, Tadison said calmly, playing along with the false persona of GNN journalist, rather than a spy for the Federation, sent here to evaluate the societies and as such shape the foreign policies. Don't get me wrong, Archivist Smith, I've seen your people show valiance, compassion and bravery, as such, just because oracles could not see your soul, I'm well aware that you do have one. More than that, you have proven that fate that is given to by oracles is indeed not unavoidable. So I guess if oracles can be wrong on that, they sure can be wrong on souls too. Datrius looked at Tadison apologetically. So what is the problem, Datrius? Tadison tilted his head in confusion. I have seen the way you wage war. And if I did not know better, I'd say you people are soulless. I've seen how impersonal you actually approach your wars. I've seen how unquestionably you just decide the death of tens of thousands and do it with but a single order and never waste a second thought to it. I've seen how much you people act. You act as if you have no souls, as if you are nothing more than automatons that you love to use so much. The worst part I've seen that everything you do is absolutely consumed by the objectives you set up for yourself, disregarding anything else. It terrifies me. So how can you both be so soulless and at the same time clearly having one? Dadchuk explained, letting go of his warrior posture as his eyes revealed great concern. How could we be so human and yet so inhumane? Tadison chuckled in response. A bit of an arrogant way to put it, and yet also proves my point. Dadrius continued to look at Tadison with concern. It is a hard question to answer with no definitive answer. Well, I guess I've been listening to your tales, I should tell some of ours as well. Tadison pulled out a cigarette and lit it up, as he looked out into the fields, leaning over the railing of the metal wall. I guess I should start from the beginning. Our civilization is roughly 13,000 years old. I can't give you an exact number, but we chose to believe so because this is when we started building our first temples. 13,000 years may appear as a huge number, but in terms of evolution, 
is but a fraction of a second. As such, the humans you see today are not so much different from those who built those temples, biologically speaking. Tadison spoke without much enthusiasm as he smoked the cigarette. You see, during those times, we indeed were very much emotional and very subjective creatures, and as such still are, but also had hunger for knowledge, something that is fundamentally an objective thing. This subjectivity, this impartiality, bore fruit, allowing us to have a greater control over our environment. We always say that to be humane is to be more kind, more compassionate, to be more generous, to be selfless, and say that to be inhumane is to be cruel, vindictive, petty, greedy, to be selfish. The problem is those two opposites are as human as it gets, as both are driven by our subjective needs and opinions. The so-called wise people among us began realising that there was no objective truth in it, and because we were driven by our subjective needs and opinions, we more often than not confused right and wrong. We knew that knowledge helped us to be more objective, and as such helped us make the difference between good and evil, Taddison said, as he looked up as if the answers were coming from high above. So we started coming up with the idea that we should be as objective as possible in our judgments, and it began reflecting in the way we did our affairs. It did in fact make us better. Our material welfare began increasing us as we did our might, we started saying that those who do not learn history are doomed to repeat it, having faith in knowledge, for it did deliver upon what was promised. However, despite all that history, always repeated itself for us. We always succumbed to divisions, wars, mutual hatred, and our methods only became more devastating as our knowledge increased. The worst part with knowledge we only saw how cruel we became. We were suffering from it, and we didn't want to see how we did all those things. Once again we looked up to our knowledge, which we thought was so impersonal, so clean, so sanitised and so practical, Tallison said as he looked at the orange hot tip of his cigarette. We began waging more and more efficiently, we tried to remove ourselves as much as possible from the equation, trying to turn it into something so clean as if that would change the fact that we were killing one another. But now armed with knowledge, we did it in even greater numbers. Killing thousands of people with a push of a button became the norm. Tallison proceeded to breathe out the smoke out of his lungs. Remember how I said that we are not biologically different from those humans 13,000 years ago? Well, knowledge is objective, but there is one problem with it. It never says what is right and wrong. It only provides solutions. We are doomed to repeat our history because we are still the cavemen that try so desperately to see oneself as something better. A caveman that is at war with one's own nature. We wage war against our very own humanity, then mistaken the tool for an answer. Tallison extinguished the cigarette on the metal railing. And the worst part... Knowing that only makes our war more devastating, he said, as he looked at the extinguished cigarette and threw it away over the wall.